and are on YouTube and Facebook. You are worshiping with us this morning at the Pansy Baptist Church in Pansy, uh, formerly Cullston, but we call it Pansy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's like Peter's fear. We are always, it's always black bottom to the but the post office stand down there. Then they call it Tinder Street. <laughs> so this has always been fancy and it'll continue to be fancy. Uh, we're now in the third chapter of the book that uh, Paul wrote his letter to the, this church, these churches in Galatia. He informed them on his first missionary journey. And, uh, and as a background for the first, uh, I want to read from the book of Deuteronomy, uh, the verse that in the 21st chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, including this chapter are uh, these words there in uh, Deuteronomy 21, 22, and 23. And if a man has committed a sin worthy of death, he is put to death, and that and thou and thou hang him on a tree. His body shall remain, shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day, for he is for he that is hanged is a curse of God, that the land be def, be not defiled which the Lord thy God gives thee as an inheritance. Now, that passage for he has, for he that is hanged on a tree is a curse of God. Now notice here, you find this in chapter 3 of, of uh, Galatians. So then which, which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many are, uh, are of the works of law are under the curse. For it is written, Curse is everyone that continue not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do thee. But that a man be justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. The law is not a faith, but the man that doeth thee shall live in thee. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of law and made a curse for us. Now, the apostle quotes from Deuteronomy 21 23. There he said, For it is written, Curse is every everyone that, that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. To, through Jesus Christ, that he might redeem, receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Christ, having redeemed us from the curse of all, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Curse is every man, everyone that hangeth on a tree. Now, among the trees that grew around Jerusalem in the days of Pontius Pilate, which was a uh, Governor, there was one that was taller, tall, towering, and beautiful and magnificent species of God's handiwork. Uh, marvelous and glorious, tall and, and towering tree. But debased and degraded and cruel men took that beautiful tree in hand and cut it down, defolded it and, uh, of its leaves, and tore off all of its branches, ripped off the bark, and cut it in two pieces. Then they mashed the cross, and they took that cross, they split it, like Abraham Lincoln did. It was a, a cruel way, uh, and made a cross on it, which was a cruel way that the Romans used uh, to execute people. So among the men who lived in Pontius Pilate, there was one man who tired above all others. He was the Son of God, pure 
holy, heavenly, good in his life, merciful, patient, unselfish, giving himself for the, those who needed and, uh, uh, the healing touch and the saving presence of God. Him did he him did a debase and great and cruel blood bloodthirsty men as they ripped him of his glory, stripped him of his glory. They divided among them his garments. They cast lots upon his seamless robe, robe and they exposed and naked they nailed him to the cross, and both them were lifted up to the earth. Between the beneath the sky and uh, beyond the earth, man of that man in that tree, both of them scourged, cut, and depraved. They hewed a hole, dug a hole in the earth. They set one end of it downward, and uh, which pointed towards God in heaven. Outreach and the outreach cross beams being uh, one pointed east and one pointed west uh, 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 held against the naked heart and agony suffering dying son of God. After the agony was over men separated the dead man and the dead wood but instead uh, forever remembered in the minds uh, uh, minds in history. It is the man and that tree, the Christ and that crop, and the hole in which the grounds, ground was placed in was the pinnacle in which the world swung up. Uh, they, uh, they made a decision. And so the glad announcement was that he, to his disciples, he was alive. And that was good news. It was like a like liquid fire. It spread from heart to heart, mouth to mouth, tongue to tongue, and the word until it filled Jerusalem, spilled over in Judea, Samaria, spread around through the Roman roads, the Mediterranean uh, coast, and there, and turned to li literally the uh, civilized world of the Romans and the Greek world into a channel, into a new course. Christ, the Son of God, who died on that tree, is alive again. And the tree began to grow. It set down roots into the heart of the earth. And the great uh, roots pierced through the fire, through flood, through hearts, through souls, through time and through centuries, and through culture and through civilization. It bears the 12 fruits and yields the fruit every month, and the leaves of that tree are for the healing of the nations. Now, the tree uh, of the Garden of Eden, the tree of life in the Garden of Eden, and the tree, of, tree in the paradise of God in heaven is none other than the tree that was cruelly cut down, made in the form of a cruel, rugged cross, and in the power, in an astonished, miraculous intervention from the uh, heaven, it, its ugliness, its shame, its horror, and all the other things became beautiful into glory and ugly unto ugliness into beauty. What have we more distasteful than the beauty of the cross beams? A beautiful tree cut down, cut down shamefully by opposed to one another. Uh, in the Colosseum, y'all have seen pictures of the Colosseum, at one end of the Colosseum is an old rugged cross. What used to stand there. I don't know if it still stands there or not. That's where all the Christians were fed to the lions. And they stood stood at that old rugged cross. 
Uh, and the Apostle Paul wrote this letter and says in the, in the, in the last chapter of the book, God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. It has become art, literature, song, and then sermon. It's become the glory and immortalized that tree and that cross. In any words, you see beautiful temples, beautiful churches. All of them in the form built in the form of a cross. I know one church right here today that's built in the form of a cross. If you are, if you look up and looking down, if you're up and you look down, you can see that it's in the form of a cross. And, and the, we've seen beautiful temples all over the earth that has been built in this form, and we have seen also. Gems of gold and silver all being cut for the cross. And lifted up to the point of the hope of man in God who, who so loved us and sent his son to die for us. Uh, I believe over in Hong Kong, over there in one section of Hong Kong, in the Portuguese section, which China is taking over Hong Kong. Uh, there was a church, St. Paul's Cathedral, I believe they call it, and it was destroyed. It's been burnt, it's been washed out, it's flooded, it's done everything. Uh, the outside of it, the only thing that stood, and at the end of it, at the pinnacle of it, was a cross. So the ugliness into the beauty curse into blessing. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the cross being a curse for us for it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on the tree and the blessings of Abraham might come to us us, the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might redeem, receive the promises of the, of the Spirit through faith. The curse is a blessing into the promise. Why did God brought with a tree to so cut down, so thoroughly used in such an ugly, inhumane place? What happened? God brought with that tree. For us, the tree comes as a hope of salvation. Uh, Christ was nailed to the cross, cross dying in sober sobs and tears. Christ was bathed his blood he, and Paul said, we preach Christ. To the Jews, it is foolishness. It's a stumbling block. To the Greek, it's foolish ignorance. That's what you say. Now, how a man who called himself reasonable, as the Jews, the, the Greeks would say, how could a person be reasonable stand in the presence of of, the, of all the people around him and say that it is through the cross, the uh, execution of a man. To the Greeks, it is idiocy or foolishness. Uh, to the Jews, it is a uh, stumbling block. But he, Christ crucified, the Son of God, the power and the love of God, and it's the wisdom of God. All music is expressed through the instrument, which uh, uh, the instrument brings out the music. Same way as electricity goes through all the wires uh, and uh, cables and wires, so does the power of the God find its outreach, its blessing, expression in the cross of Jesus Christ meditated to us. The present love, saving grace of God is that tree was so cruelly cut down. The sign of our freedom is liberty and, and deliverance. Through the century, through the ages, men have been opposed by, uh, by darkness, ignorance, by the fear of death, the inhumane, 
cruelty, but the cross is found, always found. Liberty, freedom, and truth. Paul wrote, John wrote, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And he said in the 14th chapter, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The liberty and freedom has come to us by the cross uh, of God. It came, it came to the gladiators. Gladiators that fought in the Colosseum, finally they seen what they was doing. That place, the blood that was shed on the floors of, of where the gladiators. Remember the Colosseum. Where was, how was it built? It was built by the Jewish people that Titus destroyed their temple. And he took everything that they had and they built the temple with it. So that's how the temple, the Colosseum, every time I see the Colosseum, I think of the Jewish temple that was destroyed because that. So the gladiators, in the cross came liberty, freedom to say, why is it that, why is it that all the uh, people, all the other countries want to destroy Christianity? That's the first thing they want to do, destroy Christians. Why? Because they believe in liberty, freedom. No. And, uh, and so that's where it all begins. It begins with Christ. And in the cross is mediated to us the transforming power of Christ, God's only Son. Out of darkness came light. Out of death came life. Out of suffering came salvation. Three years of his ministry was in, in the dungeons. And then three days in the in the in the in the tomb and three days on the cross. Three days. Three. All three. And the glory he raised from the dead and the news transformed, changed Peter from cowering to uh, what he said to uh, and the other disciples that was hiding, hiding in their place. They all came out of the shadows and they did not hide their face no more. They are standing, spreading about in the glorious news that Christ is raised from the dead and him there is power, power to live, power to raise from the grave, power to see God's face. There, there's new people, there's new a new man and the same transforming power touches the, the Roman world and a new civilization. And whatever it is done in the darkness, darkened land, darkened country, there is spread life, glory, triumph, and victory. And that transforming power of the cross has reached down even to us in our life, in our hearts. In our homes where we live. In Him, we are a new people, the believer of a new creation. He is something else. He is transforming the power of the gospel in the preaching of the cross. That's what we've done. We've changed everything. Uh, I'm no uh, theologian or nothing like that. I know this. I do know this. What I see, see, I see God's grace all around me. Uh, His goodness. I see the goodness of God working in the lives of children. And I also see the blessings of grace, of reaction of men and women. I see the hope of heaven in the face of, uh, and the voices of those who are facing inevitable death. Uh, and I feel in my soul the hope of heaven in my in my heart beyond the days of the pilgrims 
pilgrimage of this life. When God gave, shall give us these new bodies and new things uh, who we love and lost for a while. When the Lord shall open us the doors and the, and the good news. At the grace and the glorious and the goodness of God in Christ. That tree and that man, that cross and that Christ to us immortalized, glorified forever, and of the hope we we seek and appeal to. Through him. All of it is through him. Amen. He made a curse. He became a curse for us. That we might be redeemed from the law and the just shall live by faith. Amen. That's all. Let's stand.